All right, here we go. We begin this hour with a Fox News alert. This is a live look at the uh, offer prison where Palestinian prisoners are expected to be released in about two hours from now as part of Israel's hostage swap with Hamas. We give them, they give them prisoners, they get back innocent people. Meanwhile, in Israel, officials are prepping, uh, preparing, uh, are preparing uh, for the return of 13 hostages. They're the first of 50 to be released over the next four days. Trey Yingst is live at the Israeli airbase where the exchange is set to take place. Take it away, Trey. Hey guys, good morning. Just two hours from now, that first group of hostages is expected to be released into the hands of the Red Cross, and then they will be flown to this military base, the Hatzarim base in southern Israel. They'll be evaluated and then ultimately able to call their loved ones. We were watching earlier today as military ambulances made their way into the base. After that initial evaluation, they will go to regional medical facilities, one of five different hospitals where they will be hospitalized in separate seclusion. Included wards. Now, remember, this first group consists of 13 people, all women and children. The IDF has been working to make sure they have blankets and headphones, all sorts of supplies that they'll need when they return safely here to Israel. We, they are reportedly from the same area of southern Israel, and they will be exchanged for 24 female Palestinian prisoners and 15 male Palestinians. It has been seven hours since that ceasefire went into effect, with the exception of two rocket alerts about 15 minutes after the set time. It appears to be holding for now. The break in the fighting will last for four days, and if it goes well, we'll see 50 Israeli hostages released for 150 Palestinian prisoners. Now, despite the ceasefire, the Israelis are calling on residents in Gaza not to leave the southern part of the Strip. We saw some video online today of Palestinians trying to go to the north. The Israelis fired into that crowd. Sources inside Gaza say some people were hit in the legs. The Israelis do not want civilians or militants, of course, going into the area that is controlled by Israel. They see it as a threat to their forces. And so they're trying to maintain defensive positions inside Gaza, understanding that this lull in fighting could be extremely dangerous for the forces on the ground. Guys, back to you. Yeah, Trey, this thing is uh, not over. Is Israel going to have trouble holding on to that narrative that they need to continue? Uh, are they that concerned with the perception outside their borders? Absolutely. Look, Hamas is hoping that this temporary ceasefire will be an opportunity to expand this to a larger truce. But the reality is there will still be hostages inside Gaza after this initial group is released. There is a caveat to the agreement that would allow a, an extension of the ceasefire for 10 additional hostages for a single day. But still, the fighting will go on after this. Israeli officials, including the prime minister himself, Benjamin Netanyahu, they've made very clear that once this ceasefire is over, the Israelis will continue to operate against Hamas leadership inside Gaza. This is something that will take not days, weeks, but months. And so this is just four days of a break in the fighting. It will give civilians on both sides of the fence the opportunity to exhale amid this war that is approaching 50 days. But again, the fighting continues, but the anticipation is growing just two hours from now. People here hoping those hostages will be released yeah, to without, their loved ones. Yeah, without question. You know, Trey, uh, we're talking a lot about the Israeli hostages, but what about the Palestinian prisoners? You said 24 women and 15 teenage males. Do we know anything about them and what crimes they committed? We don't know much about them. We know that the Israelis had one line item in the agreement indicating anyone convicted of murder could not be released, but attempted murder was not on the list. So you will likely see prisoners released as part of this deal who attempted stabbings or possibly even shootings. We'll bring you those details when we can confirm them based on the individual prisoners. But this is an important point here. The Israelis at a three to one ratio are releasing Palestinian prisoners for hostages. Yeah. The hostages are civilians that were dragged into Gaza against their will on October 7th. The prisoners that are being released were convicted of crimes. And so it is largely seen as unfair when you ask average Israelis about this deal. And there are mixed opinions about this ceasefire. On one hand, people are extremely excited. They have hope for the first time in nearly 50 days that the loved ones and, and the Israeli civilians inside Gaza will finally be coming home. But they also understand there are thousands of Israeli troops inside who will be caught flat-footed if Hamas or Islamic Jihad 
decides to launch an ambush during this lull in fighting. Trey, there, there isn't a lot about this deal. There's a lot that's being reported. There isn't a lot that's being confirmed. Just as early as yesterday, we were told it was women with children that they had uh, bore in, in prison. And now we're learning that it's a lot of teenage uh, teenagers who were arrested. So that's a little bit different on the, on the teenage side, the younger side of who's being released from prison. But I, I want to, this one point I want to get your take on, Israel says they think there's 240 hostages, they're about. It's very vague as to how many hostages, exactly who they are. We found out, I think, last week about a, about a, a young girl that they thought was a hostage that was found dead. I do know that Israel released a list of names, 300 prisoners that could be released. Do you know if they've negotiated from Hamas anything other than releasing of hostages, like a list of names, proof of life? Have they gotten more information or even tactically more information uh, than maybe they're putting out there? Yeah, so the Israelis have been demanding as part of this agreement that the Red Cross be able to visit the other hostages that are inside Gaza. Hamas has pushed back on this point, and it's likely for one major reason. Hamas doesn't want Israel to know how many of the hostages yeah. are alive. We talk about this 240 number, and the tragic reality is that 240 Israelis will not ever come yeah. home. Some mm. of them are dead. Some of them were dragged into mm. Gaza. Some of them burned alive in their homes and haven't been recovered. That's how graphic and tragic the initial attack on southern Israel was. Hamas is trying to play also a psychological game here with Israel as they trickle out this, this information and also as they drag on these negotiations. But it is important to note here, the Qataris, and they are the ones who negotiated this agreement, they are hopeful that this could lead to something larger to get more hostages out. We've been talking with officials on the ground in Doha, and they are indicating that right now the talks are largely seen as positive when you compare to what it was like weeks ago in the height of this mm. conflict before the ceasefire took place this morning. So the coming days will be unpredictable. This is an incredibly fragile agreement. We have to understand that Hamas and Islamic Jihad will use this opportunity to reconsolidate their forces and try to move their fighters into positions. So knowing that the Israelis will push deeper into Gaza. But again, the focus here today at this military base and across Israel is that hope that people are holding on to. Right. They want to see these 13 hostages released, women and children, and they hope this is just the beginning. So, Trey, in a Sky News interview, Hamas's senior leader, Basim Na Naim, comes out and says, these aren't hostages, they are guests, and it's impossible <laughs> for uh, us to hurt our guests, Hamas hurt our guests. Does anyone believe crap like this? Yeah, he was texting me earlier today, and uh, we've spoken with that Hamas official uh, a number of times. I've interviewed him in person in Gaza City. The reality is we have to look at the facts here, and there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of, of parallel uh, attempts by Hamas and Islamic Jihad to spin this story to their narrative. The fact of the matter is that you will likely see in the coming hours and days video released by the groups inside Gaza of these hostages, and they'll be giving them things like biscuits and water, just like they did when those initial four were released, two American citizens and two Israeli citizens, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. But they're not treating these hostages as guests. They dragged them at gunpoint into Gaza after slaughtering their family members in their beds and in their kitchens. We saw this. We brought you the images of the bodies in these small communities, these quiet pro-peace communities. Some of the people that were killed were peace activists who were working with Gazan civilians to get them medical attention just before this massacre took place. And so you're going to have a lot of spin by Hamas and Islamic Jihad. We're going to cut through all of that because the reality here is that the exchange is happening between prisoners who have been convicted of crimes at a three to one ratio for hostages, civilians, mm. women and children who were not soldiers. They were not people who were armed. They were innocent and they were at home when this massacre took place. So well said. Trey Yanks live for us. We're going to check back in with you very soon. We appreciate your reporting and analysis. Thank you so much. Thanks, Trey. Uh, Brian, I think it was you yeah. who spoke to Liren Burnin. He has uh, twin brothers. They're being held hostage by Hamas. Would you like to introduce this? Yeah, so essentially what you're seeing is women and children out first. And we understand that. But if you're 26 year old, if you're two 26 year old healthy men, you're probably going to be one of the last to be released. Yeah. And his brother realizes that. Listen. It's, it's a bag of mixed emotions right now, uh, mostly depressed and sad, um, but with some kind of hope and for the release of the young kids and the elderly, uh, especially the, the, the 13 that are uh, getting released today. It's, 
a nightmare situation. Uh, we don't know, my, my brother doesn't meet the criteria, um, the selection process, I don't know how to call it. Um, 26, healthy, uh, healthy until 7th of October, of course. And we don't know their health now. But yeah, they are not mothers, they are not little kids, they are not elderly. So keep on waiting. That is so sad, but of course their lives matter too. We've spoken to so many families of, of hostages and um, hearing their personal stories about the people who are held hostage, you see the pictures, you see the missing pe persons posters all over New York City and maybe yeah. in your city as well. But hearing who these people are really uh, brings a different element to this. I remember speaking to one woman who has the two redheaded little boys, one's 10 months old, one's four years old. Um, the, the woman I spoke to, they're her nephews, and she was saying that the little boy, they're you know, beautiful little boys. He likes Spider Man and he likes anything with wheels. He likes trucks. And yeah. just to, you know, these stories humanize the situation in a, in a way that these pictures don't. Those images are important, but, you know, for 13 family members, for 13 families rather, this nightmare will be over. But for mm. 200 plus, it still goes on. And the subhumans that inflicted this pain. I mean, this is this is all different level of depravity that we thought we left in medieval times, but we haven't. And there's people in America and around the world who think the Palestinian Hamas movement is something they should glue themselves to the ro to the road to support. Great point.